Hey guys, episode 7 of the Snapshots interview series. I'm Dave Troop, and joining me today is Kyle Lawson, as you guys know him, Chig. How's it going, my friend? Going good. Just just chilling right now. Just got home from the gym. So. Nice, nice. Relaxing. <laughs> um, so let's get right into it. So how did you start gaming in general, and then how did you find Halo? Uh, I always grew up playing sports games. Uh, that's basically all that I did throughout elementary school, playing like NFL Street and those types of games. Uh, and then just one of my friends, he told me about Halo 1. I think it's in like sixth grade. Uh, he told me about Halo 1. It's the best game. He says, uh, I should pick it up. So, you know, I went over to a friend's house and played it and got hooked. Um, it wasn't until Halo 2, though, that I got Xbox Live at my own house and um, picked up the game. Uh, so that got Xbox Live, yeah, and then just grinded, just started playing nonstop all night. You know, my mom kicked me offline, <laughs> get, get in bed for school. Um, but, yeah, just, just friends. They got me into Halo, so I thank them. Okay, so that's cool. So then, um, you know, you started playing seriously. You started playing a lot in 2005 with uh, Halo 2 and, that, and the release of Xbox Live and that all being happening. Um, so yeah. when did you find out first about, like, the fact that you could play in tournaments and, like, make money playing Halo? Like, how did you find out about that? Um, I think it was Shook One's montages, to be honest. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Rumble Pit Gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His third montage. I, I just remember that one specifically. Uh, it got me into sniping, like the way that he does, you know, got me really good at that. But, um, yeah, just watching that, I think I looked up uh, some competitive game types and found out about MLG and just started playing, like, 1v1 snipers against my friends on lockout and free-for-all snipes on lockout and just trying to get better. Um, but, yeah, I think that's probably the way that I found out about competitive gaming. Okay. Um so it took you a while, though, to make it to your first event. You didn't go to an event until Meadows 07. If, uh, 07, yeah. So you didn't have any, like, secret, like, loser bracket round two event that you brushed under the rug that nobody knows about that, that's just, <laughs> that doesn't exist in your background? Yeah, no, I actually did terrible at those tournaments, the first two, Halo 2 tournaments. Well, you still got um, top 32, didn't you? No, I did not. I got, like, fourth. It was, like, fourth round. Oh, really? Third or fourth round, yeah. And Meadows 07 with, um, who was it, Ravage Restored and Panic or something? Panic. Almost. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we didn't we didn't do too well. Oh, okay. Uh, um, yeah. So both of those events you didn't do very well, or Meadows 07 and Chicago 07. Yeah, and got about the same third and fourth round in both 4v4 and free for all. Oh, okay. So it was fun though. It was fun. It was a good experience. Um. So what were you expecting when you went to those events? Did you like expect to do really well, and was this kind of like a disappointment, or were you like, I don't know how good we are? Like, what what was your sort of thought process when you went to one? I've always grown up to be competitive. I grew up playing sports as well as uh, playing sports video games, but um, always been a competitive player, always been a competitive person. So I, I always wanted to go in and win. You know, I didn't, I don't think I set too high expectations because they were my first tournament. I was really going for an experience and to meet some people. Um, but yeah, just just for the experience, really going to the, into those tournaments. Okay. Um... So, you know, you don't do too well. Like, what, what level were you at Halo 2 at the time? Did you get to, like, the elite levels, like those, like, 37, 40 plus when you were playing, like, good, really good players all the time? Yeah, yeah, I was, I, I was upper 30s in Team Hardcore. Okay. Um, tried to avoid the standbyers and stuff. I bridged <laughs> myself. Yeah. I had to. You had to bridge. Yeah, you uh, had to. <laughs> so I did that. But, yeah, I was, I was up there. Okay. Um... So then, I guess that's pretty much it for for you, Halo Two wise. You weren't uh, really yeah. a big competitor, a big name, or anything at that time. I was not. No, just roam the forums, <laughs> roam the Halo Two forums and the MLG forums. Oh, the good old watch days. montages. That's basically it. Yeah. Um, so then, from there, you know, Halo Three gets released. It's two thousand eight. Um, so you go to Meadows again. Now, this time, did you get yeah. top thirty two this time, or is this that? Really that was my first top thirty two. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's a big step up from third or fourth round. That's like eighth round or ninth round, right? Like seventh round is yeah, last. Yeah, something okay. like that. I'm not, I'm not too sure. But yeah, uh, I got really good online and people noticed it. My sniping online at the beginning because I was still on a tube TV. It was super <laughs> easy. Uh, but yeah, I got really good online. A uh, couple of the people I teamed with were, um, it was on third degree. I teamed with It's Dizzy. Um, Massacre. What was his name? Massacre. And... Uh, another guy. I don't remember his name, but he was really cool. Yeah. Uh, but they they were kind of big names in Halo Two, okay. uh, and they they figured out they found out I was good at Halo Three at the beginning, so they picked me up. 
okay. went and got 31st. Not too terrible, but. Not at all. So were you like expecting to do much better now that you had these like bigger names in yeah, your team? So. Yeah, we actually, I forget if it was an online uh, 4v4 tournament before the first, uh, before the opener. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the seeding tournament, right? The qualifying? Yeah, the seeding tournament. Yeah, yeah we yeah. actually did pretty good in that. So we had a, I think maybe an eighth or something seed like that oh, wow. going into the tournament. Uh, so we expected to do pretty good. Didn't happen, but. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you remember, like, did one of you choke, or was it just like you played somebody who was much better? Or? Um, they'll tell you that I choked, probably, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which it could have happened. I don't really remember, but, uh, yeah, that someone probably choked on our team. Probably <laughs> not to do too well. Okay, that's fair. It's fair. It's an honest assessment there. Yeah, um, yeah. So then you're on this top 32 team, and all of a sudden, you, uh, from there, you wind up on the team that you're probably most famous for at the beginning of your career, Breaking Point, yep. right? You yep. end up teaming with Ace, uh, who needs no introduction at this point, Clutch, yeah. who was you know, a national champion in 2009, another fantastic player, and a guy named Overshield, who was, um, he was Overshield, right? Was your fourth at the time? Yeah, um, Overshield, yep. Who was also a, a bigger name around at that point in time. Um, yeah. So how did you go from top 32 to this team? Like, how did um, that happen? I don't remember what it was. I think Ace saw mm -hmm. one of my clips in my file share. Okay. And and he hit me up one time and asked to run games or asked me if I wanted to run games with him. Pretty sure that's how it went down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, and we played and started teaming with uh I think we us two teamed and then we picked up Clutch. Or Ace might have been with Overshield first. Him and Overshield and then we teamed and then picked up Clutch. So Okay. Yeah. So this breaking clutch point... Ju clutch just... It was... What? Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. Uh, clutch just got dropped from from Mob Deep. I'm pretty sure was their team name. Okay. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Early 2000s. Yeah. So, so we picked up, picked up him, and then he actually ended up playing them at that tournament, the next tournament in San Diego, nice. and beating them. So. That's nice. The revenge grudge match is always yeah, fun. It always happens. <laughs> um, so this is like a giant step up for you in terms of placings, because now you're averaging like ninth, tenth place. Like you're just on the outside of that top eight. You're inside the top sixteen now. So, yep. what was your expectations with this team? Like, did you think like I have finally have a team that can place pro, or like what? What were your thoughts at that point? Yeah, um, we like you said, we got top twelve. We got ninth at San Diego, and we actually almost beat Final Boss. Uh, wow. Or top eight, yeah. Uh, it, we took one game from them, and a couple, couple more of them were pretty close. Uh, so we almost beat them. So that gave that gave us like a ton of confidence going into the next tournament. Um, and yeah, we placed about the same throughout the rest of the year, uh, hoping to get more, but it just didn't happen. Yeah, you guys made a few cha team changes, like you brought in uh, Mudvayne yeah. at one point and uh, Powiezy, I yeah. think, as well. Pow Wow, yeah. Um, yeah. and, but, and Logan. Yeah, yeah, you had Logan, Logan first. <laughs> um, he did pretty well for himself later on TD uh, for an event. Yeah. I was, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. You, you guys had, like, this was your kind of, for the majority of you, I think, this was kind of the team that solidified that you guys were pro, like, pro caliber players. Yeah. Um, yeah. And from there, you know, you it kind of, it, you kind of go up a bit. So 2009, the first event, you get a similar placing. You're with Ambush now, right? Um, so yeah. So Zoxic, Gunshot, and Nexus. Um, yeah. But then after that event, you, you join the team that you're probably most famous and most associated with. When people think of Chig, the first team name yeah. you think of is Classic. So yeah. how did you get picked up by these guys? Did they just notice, wow, this is by far the best player on this top 12 team? Or how did that go? Yeah, Soldier was actually the one that wanted me to team with them. You know, Best Man was on the team in Legend. Yep. Uh, best Man didn't want to team with me at the time. <laughs> he, he, was, he was totally against me. I don't know why. Uh, but... I was at baseball practice, just leaving baseball practice, um, and I got a call from Soldier uh, asking me if I wanted to run games. And of course, I was like, oh, wow, yeah, definitely. So I hurried home from baseball practice. I was like, mom, I don't want to eat tonight. Got a game. Uh, <laughs> and then we played, and we were, we were good. Uh, I guess I turned, turned best man's mind around. It's so basically how I got picked up. Okay. So um, at what point did... Because you were mentioning earlier that you know your mom was kicking you offline and stuff like that, and I think that's like every yeah. every kid gamer has a has an experience like that. At what yeah. point did your parents start to go, "Oh wait, um, he might actually be doing something with this. Like this might be more than a waste of time," which is I think how most parents see it at first, right? Yeah, they've always been actually really supportive of it. Cool. Um, they yeah they I mean they just told me to to get offline and get ready for bed. It, it, 
it just always happens. But um, <laughs> they've always been really supportive. I think that that event in Columbus uh, that we got fourth with um, when I just got picked up on Classic, I think that event was when they were kind of like, okay, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then they started actually going to a few tournaments to, to support me. So. Cool. Yeah, because I think that's the first tournament where you brought home money, right? Where you come home and you're like, It was, yeah. Look. Um, yeah, just from prize money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think since I was still living with them, I was still bringing home like stipend money and stuff from the, the previous year. So they were like, they were okay with that. But yeah, the first prize money, that's when they, that's probably when they were okay with it all. So this 2009 year ends up being a really big year for you because, you know, you're, you're hovering around fourth, sixth. You guys drop Legend again because he'd been dropped earlier in 2008. He had been dropped as well. And then you yeah. pick back up. Um, and you guys drop him for Ghost Aomi, obviously a legend in his own right. And yeah. uh, you get sixth in Anaheim. So it doesn't look like much of an improvement. And then you guys do really, really well at Orlando. You get second place. Um, yeah. So what, what was that like getting all the way to the national, the national, like first you were just at the national championships, which were, you know, not an event that everybody could go to. So that's prestigious in and of itself. And then, yeah. you know, coming second, winning like 60 grand or something like how, you know, yeah. what was, can you talk to yeah. us about, uh, that, about that tournament? Well, to touch on Anaheim first, sure. uh, when we picked up Ghost, he, he had just got dropped from Instinct. So that was like, that was our main thing. We wanted to beat Instinct that next tournament, get his revenge. And we, we ended up doing that. So. Uh, I think that took all of our energy that tournament. That's why we got sixth. But um, going into the national championships, uh, the next tournament, uh, we actually had a, a land with straight ripping down at their team house in Florida for a week, a whole week before the tournament. So, oh, wow. yeah. And then I think Power, that was probably their team name back then, the EU team. Yeah, yeah. Buck, uh, Buck Twins. Buck Brothers. I think that. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was them. They stopped by yeah. too, anyways, uh, yeah. and got cool. a few games in as well with us in straight. But that real that that land really helped us propel to the next step because we actually got to focus on our communication and focus on uh, our teamwork together. And communication was a huge thing with us. Like if you watched any of our scrims or any of the the tournament uh, listen ins and stuff, you would yeah, always yeah. hear us communicate like crazy. Uh, but that, yeah, that really propelled us to the next step. And then at the national championships, we just carried that along together. Yeah, you guys had a really good tournament. You in particular had a had a fantastic event for the most part. I mean, yeah, playing yeah, incredibly. I was playing really well. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, it was kind of. I think Puckett even made a comment in the final series saying that this is this is basically Chig versus Demon D at one point. Um, I think yeah. he was saying in the commentary because uh, you yeah. guys were both playing out of your minds. Um, mm -hmm. But I think when you talk about this event, there's a little bit of controversy here because there is the infamous, uh, your, your, you know, your now teammate, Heinz, right? Yeah. He's about to cap the flag and then Hysteria's Xbox turns off. Yeah, uh, it always gets brought, brought up to this day, too. It, just somehow it always gets brought up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's, it was a, it's a pretty infamous moment, right? Like, he's literally yeah, yeah. on the flag thing. So what did you guys think, like, oh, we lost? Like, even after that happened, did you like, oh, they're going to give them the win? Or were you like, no, we actually get the replay here? Like, what was going yeah, through your mind? There's no way we would have stopped that flag, but we argued it. Uh, <laughs> well, we said that we had a guy coming up our street, which we did. Uh, he was nading, but I don't think we would have stopped it. But we argued it, and the rules, they have to follow the rules, and said that we replayed. Mm -hmm. And you know, Ghost had the spirit fingers, like yeah, thank yeah, you, yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, re yeah, we replayed that and won, and then won the won the close game five. That game five was actually really good too. Yeah, again, it was really that, intense. Yeah, it was like fifty forty eight, I think, right? Yeah, 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 it was. Yeah, it's a crazy game. So <laughs> I mean, you guys have you guys have this. How big of a momentum shift is that in the middle of a tournament where you know you, that flag cap's about to go in? You guys are like, ah, oh, shit, we just got knocked into losers bracket, and then to win that whole series after that. What is that? Do you think that like played a part in, you know, the momentum you guys had going forward and everything? Um, you know, after that game, I think we lost. We lost the next series. So, oh, yeah, really? I think it yeah, I think it did have a little effect on us cuz we knew like, wow, man, that's really crappy for them. Uh But yeah, I I, I think it killed kind of killed our momentum, if which is pretty weird, but Really? That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, you guys played BTH the next series, right? I think we that was the BTH series before, winner bracket yeah. finals, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, that was an interesting tournament. I think you guys took them to eight games in the in the finals. Or the, the extended series was eight games. It was a really, uh, really good series for the most part. Yeah. Um, we, didn't, so, we didn't play too well against BTH. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, was definitely, it definitely didn't quite look the same, but, I mean, you guys were still playing 
really, really well, especially yeah. um, at the time. And I think it's fair to say that most most people thought that, that was going to be maybe a straight rip in triggers down or straight rip in instinct. Yeah, exactly. These and were the BTH fun- actually, <clears throat> BTH beat uh, straight. Yeah. Tournaments. Yeah, that was uh, it. Was the tournament Surprising. of upsets, right? We yeah. were hoping to we were hoping to to play straight rip in instead of BTH because, like I said, at that LAN, uh, we actually demolished them. Uh, we didn't release the the LAN scores because you know we didn't, but we actually beat them pretty bad at that LAN. Oh really? So you you knew yeah, if we, we were, play we were hoping to play them. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. You have like a psychological edge. Like we just destroyed you for a week straight. Like now it's, yeah. it's time to make our money here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So then you move into 2010, and again you make it to the finals in the very first event. Um. You know, and again you kind of fall short. This time it was to Instinct, that new Instinct squad. Uh, I think both times you lost actually was in a ball game, right? It was like Heretic Ball in the finals, and then Guardian yeah. Ball. Um, yeah. So talk just a bit about that event. Were you guys like, we can win this event? Like, uh, we're, you know, we, we came second. We came so close. That BTH team was fluky. We can win this now. We're the real deal. Or like, what, what was the mentality around that time? Um, we kind of thought the BTH was a fluke. And then for the opener, we actually picked up Tzoxic instead of Best Man. Yep. Um, and he brought so much more to the, to the team, like slang-wise, than Best Man. So we thought it was an improvement. And we actually didn't do too well. At the at the the LAN network LAN before the tournament, uh, we had kind of an easy bracket at the tournament. So I think we got what what we should have gotten second place. Uh, we should have lost to Instinct, which we did. But uh, yeah, we, I mean we weren't that good. Okay. But yeah, Tzoxic actually had a really he was playing really sick in the finals, especially. I remember there was one snipe in that final game on Guardian where he was getting like shot S three and he he had. One shot, and he just barely pokes a sniper out, and I think it was Lunchbox that he planed uh, yeah. right as he dies. It was, it was really good play. Um, yeah, he was good. He was really good. Yeah, he was a really, really good player for a while. Um, so then, you got, after the second place finish, you guys kind of, you fall the seventh in Columbus. Um, was uh, there any reason that you can put your finger on me now when you reflect that, as to why that happened? I don't know. No, I really don't. Like I said, we weren't, we really weren't that good of a team uh, okay. with the Zoxic. So we we got lucky that the the tournament before with our bracket, but uh, I forget who we lost to at Columbus. It might have been Carbon that we lost to. Um, uh, yeah. I'm not too sure, but yeah, we we got what what we we deserved for that tournament, seventh place. Okay, so it sounds like you're saying that even though you think that Tzoxic was an upgrade individually over Best Man, that there was some element that Best Man brought to Classic that made you guys yeah. a better complete squad. Yeah, Best Man's always been a good team player for for every team that he's been on. So he he helped us all out, opened up opened up myself to do what I could do at the national championships. Yeah, because at at this time when you would get the sniper, especially, uh, and you would heat up, because sometimes you know you were always a good player, but then you'd have these tournaments or these games or these moments where what Puckett would call you would you would start chigging, and you would just chigging, go yeah. yeah you would just go crazy with the sniper. <laughs> Um, yeah. So is this like a flow state for you, or like, do, do you can you ever kind of tell when this is gonna happen, or is this just like some games you just pull out this ridiculous performance? Yeah, I I don't know. I'm usually consistent with my gameplay, and sometimes, like you said, I will just perform really well. But I don't, I don't know. It it just happens. <laughs> so you haven't been able to figure out exactly what that uh, that button is yet, huh? No, not yet. I just I just do it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so then it sounds like, you know, you guys, after you fall and you guys kind of realize, like, Tzoxic may be a good player, but he's just not the right one for us. So you swap him for T squared and become straight ripping when you're playing with Tom, obviously. Um, yeah. Things get even worse. So do you have any idea what happened at that event? Well, after Columbus, I actually got dropped from Classic. Oh, okay. So myself and Tzoxic got dropped. Uh, I formed, or we formed a team with myself. Uh, Tzoxic, Clutch, and APG, which we were dominating online, like <laughs> really beating everyone pretty bad. Uh, and then I think it was two days before the last the roster lock uh, for the rally tournament. Um, I got a call from from Ghost saying that you know they were dropping legit because they they picked up Squared and legit for the team. Uh, so I got a call saying that. They weren't working out with legit, and we're wondering if I would team with them, and you know, kind of persuaded me with the Dr Pepper sponsorship, and it was like ten thousand dollars for this. Um, but I 
I ended up leaving the team that I was on that with the Tzoxic and APG and Clutch and went back to them just because, you know, it's the same team that we got second with with T-squared. So you can't, can't go wrong with T-squared. Definitely not. Uh, no, we just, and then, yeah, joined them. We just weren't good again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so does this kind of does that kind of haunt you a little bit? Where you're like, oh man, this it team does. I had was so good, and I left it. It does. A- APG still gives me crap about it uh, <laughs> a lot. So, but yeah, it, I always look back and think, you know, why why did I choose the money with Dr Pepper rather than trying to win with the with my team uh, that I had? But you know, I learned from it. I still learn from it uh, and use that as an example today. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, but yeah. at, at the same time, when you were, you were in what, high school at that st- time still? Were you maybe in college um, at this point or were you still in high just school? Just great just graduated high school. Yeah. Well, you know, for any eight, any 18-year-old, you give them $10,000. That's a you have to be an yeah. exceptional person to turn that down, yeah, especially at that age, right? So, yeah. I, I don't think anybody exactly. can blame you in that situation. I'm pretty sure most people would have done the exact same. Yeah. Um Okay, so you know this this happens, and you guys don't you guys don't do so well. So then you and Soldier, the guy who originally got you into classic, um, yeah. kind of move, and you say, okay, let's go to Carbon. We'll team up with SK and Walshy, you know, another huge legend. Um, yeah. And again, things aren't quite so good. You get thirteenth and eighth. So yeah. what? That that was us being stuck with no really options for us uh, right. because you know pro points were such a huge thing. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to make sure that we solidified ourselves to make it to the finals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so after that, after the rally tournament on straight ripping, we didn't do too well. Uh, Ghost and Squared left us for uh, Nated and Defy, okay. I think, on straight ripping. That's and right. yeah, so Soldier and I picked up SK and Walsh, uh, like I said, mainly for points. And then we got 13th place and then like 13th place again the next two tournaments. Uh, <laughs> You got eighth Maybe, at the yeah, national. Yeah, yeah I think it was just just thirteenth. We yeah. we got thirteenth at DC. Yeah. Um, and then straight rip and they got like ninth, I think, and they had to get top eight to pass us in points. So wow. Yeah. So we uh we actually made it to the to the finals because it was top eight only that yeah. finals. Yeah. Um, we made it to the finals and they didn't. So it was kind of like rubbing it in their face. <laughs> so. Squeaked in past them there. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. You know, at Halo. You have a very interesting Halo Three career because you were so you were a just in, on an individual basis. You were a really good player. This it's very hard to argue with that. I mean, your shot was really good. You seemed to make very yeah. good decisions in game, but your placings were really really sporadic. Was that yeah, you, they was were. that kind of just on maybe you not being able to find the right core group of guys to you know to stay, stick it out with or maybe yeah that's probably it um, and. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know why, but you know, every team was really good around that time, so you know, anybody could be anybody on any given Sunday. Yeah. So I think, I mean, that had a thing, that had something to do with it. Um, but yeah, it's probably probably the teams too that I had. It's not some weren't as good as others, obviously, and just didn't place that well. So was it was it hard for you to keep your motivation during this time, or like what was your internal kind of dialogue like when you're you know, you're a great player. You know, like, ah, I could be placing higher. I've come second. I should be, you know, vying to win tournaments. And I'm, I'm not quite there. But, you know, what, like, what, yeah. what's, what's your thought process like during that, during that period? Um, during that period, uh, you know, we, we were stuck teaming with people for points. So the motivation wasn't too high. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, I was still trying to win. I still was giving it my all. Um, but I had something in the back of my head, like, you know, we're not that good. But just gotta try and win, make the most of it, and see what I can come with myself for for the next season. Yeah, uh, that has happened to a few players where they're kind of stuck in a situation, and it's like it's a test of your character and your your love for the game, right? To keep playing and grind through that. Yeah. Um, so that pretty much does it for Halo Three. Do you have any like really big like standout moments from Halo Three uh, that you know to you like is your number one like memory of the game that makes it all worth it? Yeah, that was. The national championships that we got second place and how well I played that tournament. Um, I think every time that we played onslaught or you know or midget ball besides the last game of the entire tournament, um, I went I went double pause. You know, looking at stats. You know, I usually don't do that, but 
I, w- I was playing really well that tournament, and just coming second was icing on the cake. Um, so yeah, that was probably the best memory from Halo 3 that I have. That's pretty fair. Yeah, you did, and like yeah. I said earlier, you did have a fantastic tournament. I remember watching, and being, holy shit, this guy's just yeah. going off right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then we have to move into Reach, which is, you know, it's kind of spotty. Um, your yeah. first tournament is actually kind of the end of an era for you because you went, you're still a soldier and you team with yeah. Anarchy and Cypher, but this is actually the last event you team with Soldier. And I is, did Soldier even play anymore after this, or was this the end for him? He went to he went to a couple more tournaments after this one. I think he teamed with Swagger like us. Okay. And they got seventh at the next tournament after. Oh, okay. After we split, so yeah. Um. So, what? Let's talk about him for a minute because you had teamed with him since the second event of two thousand nine. So this is basically you know a full two years that you had been teaming with this guy. Um, yeah. I actually passed up Ant for how long I, how long someone teamed with Soldier. So, <laughs> I'm, his, I'm his long longest duo. Um, so what was it about Soldier that kept you saying I want to keep teaming with this guy? You know, even though you were having some of these rough times, you, you seemed to stick by him, or you stick, you stuck by each yeah. other. Yeah, uh, I mean, we worked really well together. Uh, we took constructive criticism really well together. He he actually helped me grow a lot as a as a player because okay. he would he would criticize me a lot when I first joined the team. Uh, he was a really good communicator inside the game, and he he was actually really a really good di- guy outside the game as well. So I think just everything about him just made me want to team with him. You know, he was he was, he was a cool guy. That's cool. So like an all around good fit then. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um. So like I said, when you that first event, you know, obviously didn't go very well. You get 18th, which I think is your worst finish in like two or three years, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. It had been a while it's since you played that. New game, new game. Yeah, Blame it yeah. on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Reach is definitely not one. Uh, if you talk to a lot of the old pros, it, it seems that Reach is, doesn't seem to be anyone's favorite title. Um, yeah. Except maybe Ogre Two and Ola and Roy Box. <laughs> but um, yeah. So, so you start teaming with you know Mick Win and this kind of <clears throat> sorry. This is when you kind of see yourself start start to form a new partnership with with Mick Win now. Um, so you yeah. go, you know, with elitist and straight sick, and you get nineteenth again. Not a really great result. Um, yeah, but then Granted, you form- we had the we had the toughest pool. We were in the pool of death. Oh yeah, uh, yeah with yeah. BCH straight ripping and instinct. So Oof. that really set us back in the in the bracket. Yeah, but yeah, go on. Yeah, that would not be a fun pool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but after that tournament, you form you know your roster for the rest of Reach um, and into Halo Four actually. So yeah. it's prototype, straight sick, Russo. And you guys actually start to do a little bit better. You know, you get third at Anaheim, you get sixth in Raleigh, uh, yep. a little dip in Orlando, uh, getting 11th. But then again, you get fourth at the Nationals in Providence. So you, you make some good money during this era and you know, get some yeah. decent placings. Uh, yeah. What was it about this team that you think, you know, made you guys good and helped you guys, uh, you know, made you guys better than your previous ones? Was there some chemistry thing yeah, that was going we had, on? Or? We had amazing chemistry, uh, which was very surprising because none of them had placed that well. Before that, that Anaheim tournament that we got third, um, and we didn't really even expect to do that well at the tournament. We, oh, really? I mean, we were good online. Yeah, we were pretty good online, but I mean, we had to go into the tournament not being too cocky or expecting too much just because it was our first tournament together. But uh, yeah, we had amazing chemistry together. We ended up winning our pool at Anaheim that tournament. It was a three-way tie with okay. us, um, Dynasty and severance i think uh and then we we actually came out on top because we had the the most kills or the least amount of kills allowed against us in the slayer against the, the australian team so that put us in a uh, automatically top six for that tournament um but yeah so after after you get that third place does that kind of like give you guys a, a new confidence or a new boost or like a new attitude on like oh my god we're actually a good team we can you know maybe make the finals or win an event yeah yeah it did uh we actually got pretty cocky <laughs> a couple of us did not me not me <laughs> no but <laughs> uh we got a little cocky and we got what uh top six i think at the next tournament yeah um yeah okay um so were you guys really good friends who outside of the game? Because again, like when you see a team that gets third and then you kind of see them, you know, get placings that are lower, especially in the Halo scene, that tends to mean okay, someone's getting the boot um, very, very quickly, right? Yeah, but you guys yeah. stuck together. Um, yes. So why was that? Um, we were really good friends outside of the game. Uh, 
straight stick and prototype they live you know right next to each other out in la so that made them really good friends um <laughs> he's just whining not he sees someone outside uh <laughs> uh and then russo you know he's uh hard to hate you know he's a he's a really good guy uh, but there was some a little bit of turmoil as well uh that could have caused the eleventh place that we got in Orlando, but I'm not going to go into that really. Uh, <laughs> but, Secret turmoil. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the most part, we were really good friends. We made up after that tournament and for for the championships because we knew we had to. So. Yeah, because there was the there's, MLG still had that roster lock rule, right? Where the tournament before yeah. the championships, you can't change teams or anything. Right. Like that. Yep. We had to team with each other, and we we knew that, so we we definitely made up what uh what our problem was. Okay, that's good to hear. It's always good yeah. to hear people can, you know, put their differences behind them and everything. Um, yeah. So then let, I just want to, you know, ask you about Reach for a bit because you have been around the game for a long time and you're definitely part of the older generation of pros and, and you know, known names. Um, there seems to be a lot of, of the older pros and a lot of the older players that really struggled with adapting to Reach specifically. Like a lot of, a lot of pros had some of their, wor- had their worst, you know, seasons in MLG during the yeah. Reach era. Um, Maybe other than their their very breakout season or something when they're first yeah. coming onto the scene. So, do you have any inklings as to maybe why this might be? Like, why so many of the old guard really just weren't as good at reach as they were at the other games? Because it seems uh, now that Halo Two Anniversary, you guys are all really good again. Like, there, it doesn't seem like there's any. You know, all you guys who were really good back in the day are still really really good now. So, what yeah. was different about reach that changed that? Bloom and Sprint. <laughs> <laughs> Really, that that's probably the main reason is people kind of get used to Bloom and uh, and Sprint. So I mean, now Halo Two Anniversary, like you said, they're they're good again because there's no Bloom and Sprint. So <laughs> it, it's really the people that adapted to it and learned to learn to base their shots or learn how to spam the correct way with Bloom. Hmm. And some people, you know, the the older pros just didn't really want to put in the time, maybe, to to learn it themselves. Not too sure if that was the reason, but. Probably, probably Bloom or Sprint. Bloom and Sprint were the reasons. Okay. So do you foresee, like, maybe uh, a kind of a return of this problem in Halo 5 with, you know, the likely possibility of Sprint being included in the game and everything? Do you foresee yeah. some of the old guard falling out? I mean, I didn't really play too much of the beta, so I, I don't know much about Halo 5, but what I was told of Sprint actually wasn't really that useful because your shields don't recharge, I do know that. Yeah. And there's, there's not Bloom. Or I don't think there's bloom. No, there's no bloom. But thank God. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't think it'll be too big of a problem. People will still be still be pretty good at it, especially uh, with the Halo Championship Series going on now. People will actually want to put the time in. So. Okay. Um, what did you think of Reach in the very last event? I think it was the Winter Championship 2012, where they removed the bloom, and you know it was yeah. like more like a traditional Halo game. Yeah, yeah, that was actually fun. Uh, made the <laughs> It, they were they were going to do that for Providence, uh, but since you know the the whole season before that um, was Bloom and or with Bloom and Sprint, they couldn't just change it for the finals. Yeah, so, that makes sense. Uh, Columbus, it was it was really fun. It was really fun. The game was really good. Uh, we got a land in before it with uh, straight ripping, I think, with straight ripping. Yeah, okay. at the at the new land network in Indianapolis. Um, so that kind of prepared us a little bit, and but we still got seventh place, so it wasn't wasn't too good. But you know we can blame it on that instinct series, the forty nine forty nine game five, <laughs> just to just to kill all of our momentum. Oh uh, yeah, that's losing, <coughs> losing games like that are always heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. It's really when you're the, when victory is that close within your grasp and it falls out yeah. of your hands. Up two zero in the series, you know, feeling <laughs> good, and just we get goaded on. Uh. That's that's heartbreaking. It really is. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to keep your momentum or your head in the game after that and not beat yourself up for that yeah. though, the rest of the tournament. Right? Yeah. Um, it, was, it was a good show though. It was yeah. a good show, I guess. So. It was. It was a really good series. I mean, I didn't watch. Uh, Reach was definitely the game that I watched the the least of at the time. You know, I went back and watched a whole bunch of the vods recently, but um, yeah. You know, during the time of Reach, it kind of that was. I remember I watched that one because everyone was like, "Oh, there's no Bloom now." Yeah. It's like, "Oh, this game's <laughs> interesting." <laughs> Yeah, and you gotta watch this one. Yeah, this is the uh, the traditional Halo Reach tournament, I yeah. guess you could call it. Um, so then Halo Four comes out, and you actually stick with the same roster. Um, you get top twenty four, <laughs> so not yeah. not quite not quite that good. 
Um, but what did you think of what did you think of Halo Four in general? Like, did you did you like the game? Did you think it was not so good? What what were your thoughts on it? No, I didn't really like it. Uh, like you said, we got top twenty four at the opener because people played the game early. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we chose to use BRs that tournament. And, oh, okay. You know, DMR was the way to go. Uh, but yeah, I didn't I didn't really like the game. Uh, I took a couple tournaments of the AGL, so I took a couple of those off and actually came back for AGL 5, maybe. Yeah. I think. Yeah, it was AGL 5. Yeah. But Best man, Nick, and Russo. You did much better, actually. You got top 12. Yeah, top 12 with, I mean, there wasn't very, that many good teams there. So top 12, <laughs> I, I wouldn't, oh, excuse me, I wouldn't say it was that good. But the next oh. tournament, we did pretty well. Yeah, actually, the next two tournaments, you do pretty well. You get, you know, third at UMG Chicago. And then yeah. second at AGL eight. Um, no, we got second at UMG Chicago. With oh, okay. Roy. And yeah, it was with third at AGL seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Split flop. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is again kind of like you've reunited with Mick Quinn. Now, when you played with him earlier, did you guys like strike up a friendship, and that kind of created the the grounds for you guys to kind of come back together? Or? Yeah, we were pretty good friends. I went to his house in Reach when we uh when we teamed for Columbus. Um, to, to practice but yeah we, we created a pretty good friendship that carried on especially uh when he was on straight ripping too later in the later in the year and us landing against them at the the new land network uh we we stayed friends and we stayed pretty close together okay um so that like i said that kind of laid the groundwork and uh for you know the the denial roster that exists now um with you and mick when but so these these few events, I mean, you get Roy. Roy comes back, right? Because Roy had been taking off majority of uh, majority of Halo Four. Roy had kind of, you know, the Roy Box had both kind of exited the scene, but Roy had kind of come back. Um, yeah. For one of the few tournaments he's ever played without his brother, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you guys did pretty well. So you get, you know, third, and then you get um, second at AGL Eight, right? And that's the other one with Roy. So it's UMG Chicago and AGL Eight. Where you have Roy in your, second or, at UMG Chicago. Yeah. Third yeah. at AGL Eight. Yeah. 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 With Roy. Yep. Okay. And the Chicago tournament, we had Ryan Noob, Mick yep. Wynn, myself, Ryan Noob, and Roy uh, for his first tournament back. Uh, we didn't really know what to expect with Roy. I mean, obviously it's Roy, so he's going to be really good, but uh, he hadn't played much Halo 4. Uh, and we got second. We got demolished in the finals by Ambush. Um, and so he wanted to pick up APG in place of Ryan for the next tournament, uh, just to add more slaying power. And then we got, I think we got Ryan Noob cursed. <laughs> Maybe the next tournament. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys got uh, sixth. Yeah, we did. It wasn't too good. Um, <laughs> <but> yeah. <laughs> kind of uh, dropping Ryan Noob for APG, uh, something that's going to happen again oh, yeah. very, very recently. <laughs> um, yeah, nope. So that kind of does it for, for the Halo 4 era, I guess you could say, because, I mean, there really isn't o uh, over overly amount of things to talk about from that, from that time. Um, yeah. You know, MLG had dropped Halo in general, and the game was kind of dying. Did you, during this time, did you see yourself like moving on completely? Like, oh, I'm I'm just done with Halo, or what? What What was your kind of thought process during this last like year and a bit where the Halo scene had been slowly dwindling? I think I did see myself done. Um, my girlfriend was pretty happy about it, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. And then Halo Two Anniversary came out, and you know I saw the Invitational tournaments. And I, I didn't get invited, but um, watch those. And just, I could tell Halo is coming back. I've been told, you know, HCS is coming. You should start playing again. So I did. What, which, what, which Halo did you start playing while you were waiting for Halo 2 Anniversary to be made available to the public? Uh, Halo 3. I uh, played Halo 3 for a little while. Uh, there was going to be that Halo 3 tournament in Indianapolis uh, that got canceled. You know, the, the AGL sure. tournament. Uh, yeah, yeah. But was playing that for a while, and then I got Halo 2 Classic for XBC and started playing that a little bit. But, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Um, <clears throat> so then Halo 2 Anniversary actually does come out, um, and then you guys form this Team Denial. So how, how does that roster get formed, first of all? And then how, does, how do you guys end up with the Denial organization? Because obviously they're a, you know, they're a giant organization in esports, a great COD team and all this stuff. So. Um, how did both of those things happen? Yeah, so I th pretty sure I'm pretty sure this is how it went. Uh, Spike Mouth he got in touch with with Denial, uh, telling them that we were gonna get our old classic 
roster together with straight stick prototype and Mickwin, I think, uh, which that didn't work out. But um, you know, Mickwin, Mickwin and I stuck together with Denial and told them that we wanted to pick up Cloud as the third as the third player, and then we just went with Ryan. It was really it was really a simple forming of the team. Um, I think we we tried out Reliable first, which didn't work out too well. Uh, so we went with Ryan Noob instead, but yeah, it was, it was pretty easy forming, forming together, especially because Denial was so open with us about who we wanted a team with, really. Uh, they weren't looking for names or really anything, so they were just looking to uh, form the best team that we thought would be good. So they really put their trust in you and Mickwin then and said, you guys yeah, know what you're doing, exactly. we'll leave it to you. Yep, exactly. That, that's really cool to hear. Um, yeah. So there was no like, oh, we can't have Cloud on my team. He's denied me two tournament victories. We, yeah, we lost to him both the finals. That didn't happen. We were like, oh, that's Cloud. It's fine. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so no, you guys formed this roster, and then um, you know you couldn't go to IG Columbus for some personal reasons or something yeah. along those lines. Um, yeah, my girlfriend had graduation, so oh, okay. could missed that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a very, very big milestone. Um, yeah. But then, so the first you know, time this team really plays together in a major competition is actually an online one, which is the PGL 10K, right? I believe that happened before St. Louis, or did it happen after? I can't mm, remember now. I think it was after. Okay. I'm so pretty, I, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it was after. So, so then the first time you guys you know, really make a, make a scene is when you show up at UGC, and yeah. you guys win the whole tournament. Uh, yeah. You guys do really, really well. I mean, you beat CLG, I want to say... 3-1 in the winner's bracket finals. Yeah. And then we, you beat... And then, so how does that go? Because they were like the top dogs at this point. Yeah. Um, I don't really know. We just, we just caught fire, I guess. <laughs> uh, you know, playing a couple of the, the amateur teams earlier in the tournament, we were kind of shaky. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we really didn't know what to expect, you know, how good we were going to be. But once we started playing, we, we played EG next, two of them uh, for top six i think and then yep. like you said we played clg but um yeah i don't know it just something clicked with us instantly that series and we just carried the momentum on to the rest of the tournament so you guys beat them 3-1 in the first in the first series in the winner's bracket finals and then i believe they beat you in the first series of the finals right they made it it was a two series finals or am i calling this incorrectly no. uh yeah i think you're right yeah, we went into that last finals really not mentally prepared. Okay. Um, we were kind of joking around, you know, thinking, hey, this is going to be easy. We can lose two series and still win the tournament, or one series and still win the next series and win the tournament. But, uh, yeah, they, they beat us the, that first series 3-1. So uh, kind of woke us up a little bit for the next series. You know, it was, I think it was like 1 o'clock that we were playing, 1 o'clock Sunday night yeah, in, the, yeah. in the morning. That we were playing, but we we stepped it up that next series. So. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of delays. That was actually the last tournament I think where you know the, the game itself was having major issues. Yeah, yeah, in, in it the was. Game. Yeah, um, there was a lot of like black screens and restarts. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's how do you keep your focus as a player? Because um, you know in the previous episode with Victory, we were talking about this where. When you play a day, like I've been to local land tournaments and playing for a full day, you, you get really exhausted, right? So how yeah. do you how do you do that when you're not only playing for a full day, but you're playing for an elongated day because there's like restarts and all these things happening and momentum shifts and yeah, it, I think it's just adrenaline. You know, you're you're there for to play in a tournament, so the adrenaline kicks in. You know, you're you're getting really hyped. So I don't I don't really think it affects you really too much with the delays and stuff, but maybe momentum is okay. really what it affects. Okay. Um, so now you guys win this tournament, and I think you surprised a lot of people. I mean, everybody knew you guys were definitely a, a top caliber team, but uh, CLG and EG were kind of the, considered the, you know, the two yeah. head honchos at the time. And right. you, know, you guys beat both of them in rather convincing fashion, right? I mean, you sweep EG yeah. during the tournament. Um, so what does this kind of set the mood for you guys as moving forward? Because when I spoke to Ryan Noob, I think he said that he thought that the whole thing was kind of a fluke. And that was kind of his internal, or something along those lines. Like he wasn't, he didn't, he didn't really necessarily have confidence that this was going to happen again. Um, yeah. What did, did the rest of you guys feel the same way? Or were you guys like, no, we're a no. really good team? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we really didn't feel the same way. And I think that was a spark of our turmoil that we had. Uh, you know, Ryan not really 
having confident in uh, confidence in us and you know saying that other teams are going to win like being serious about it too but uh yeah i mean i guess you could say it kind of was a fluke ugc because you know this is our first tournament with eg's first tournament with lethal uh teams not practicing you know that much because of the holiday mm -hmm. uh but you know what what can you say i don't know that's totally fair um yeah. Because yeah, the you know the next event to Chief Four G, um, you know apparently there's a lot of controversy on your team because Ryan was being interviewed near the beginning of the event, and they, somebody asked him who's going to win, and he says Evil Geniuses hands down. Yeah, it's, it's not it's yeah. not even a question. Um, yeah. So I heard that spark like Mick Wynn got really upset at him. You know, yeah. was this is this kind of what happened? That's what happened. That's basically it, and <laughs> it just escalated from there for the next two tournaments. Uh, not doing so hot online, you know, a little bit of arguments. Um, you know, we'd give criticism to each other, but some of us wouldn't take it so hot. Uh, we'd fire back at the other guy saying, well, you did this. But uh, it, it just escalated to a point that um, we weren't really clicking together in-game because of it. So and it, it really showed at the, the G4G in the final. Yeah, so the atmosphere became a little bit corrosive then, in a sense. It, like, hurt yeah. you're in the gameplay. Yeah. That's sad when that happens. Yeah. I mean, the it it does. It happens. It happens to people, but yeah. Well, I mean, it's 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 uh it's an intense thing, right? You guys are playing for money. It's it's your job in a sense, right? So sometimes when you you know you're working with these people and you know you're not gonna like all your coworkers, you're gonna have different ideas about how to get things done, and that yeah. friction can happen as long as you know nobody takes it too personally at the end of the day. It's, uh, yeah, it's just, right. just a part of life, I think. Um, so well, actually, let's just backtrack to um to St. Louis for one second here because you guys got you guys won that tournament which is your first tournament win and I yeah. believe I could be wrong about this but I believe you hold the record for the most tournaments attended major tournaments attended without winning but yet winning a tournament so like you have 29 tournaments before you won <laughs> one you won your 30th victory yeah. victory x won his 28th I believe it was I think he okay. he thought he held the record but I, I did some looking around after that I think <laughs> you do um, it's me huh yeah, I don't know if that's a good record, but <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better than the the most tournaments attended without ever winning. So at least you have right. the, yeah, at least Nathan. you have the win. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Poor guy. No, he'll yeah. get one. Yeah, he'll probably get one. He They're, has to. His new team's pretty good. So yeah, they look very good. Um, yeah. So what did that feel like for you? Did you feel like you know? Did you kind of feel like in a sense like am I ever? Did you ever have that thought like am I ever going to win one of these things? Like was that starting to weigh down on you at all? Like what did it feel like to finally get that win? Was it like a, just a big sigh of relief? It, yeah, it was a big sigh of relief. Uh, you know, just making it to the finals. And most of the finals that I've been in haven't really been close. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, we always got blown out. Um, so yeah, it was it was good to be on the other other end of that blowout when we when we beat CLG. Okay, it's fair. I just. I had to kind of check in with how uh, how that feeling wins because I mean, especially when you win a tournament for that much money, the feeling not only knowing that you're the best, but also getting a paycheck like that has to be kind yeah, of yeah. It was, it was the biggest tournament of besides the finals. It was the biggest tournament last season. Yeah, yeah, it was the the diamond it was, tournament. Yeah, or yeah, whoever, it was good to win. It um, okay. But then you guys win the PGL 10K online, which was big. Or not win, you came second. Sorry. Yeah. But yeah. Um, you know, it still looked at that time like you guys were still a really top contending team. Like it didn't look. I think at G4G, you guys kind of surprised people by not, again, being a, you know, a top two or top three team. Yeah, I think you lost to CLG there. in Cloud9, I believe, G4G, mm -hmm. right? Um, so was it just like the, these chemistry issues just literally stopped you guys from playing? Did you get outplayed? Did somebody have a bad event? Like, what, what happened to that one? Yeah, I, I really just think it was the chemistry issues. Uh, it didn't stop us from playing together as a team. Uh, like, online, we practiced, you know, we practiced a ton still. Uh, it was just the... A little bit of turmoil that we would have would just put people in bad moods, and we just didn't get the best practice ever. That's fair. Um, now, since you know, I haven't spoken to too many people who have you know said that they were on a team where the atmosphere wasn't great. Uh, and the question I have for that is, does that affect like your trust in game when when you don't really trust somebody outside the game, um, or you're you know kind of arguing with them and you're not really happy with them? Then yeah. you know they make a call out, or they say, "Do this." Do you? Does that affect your trust? Like, what do you know? Like, why would I listen to you? Like, does that yeah. does that come into play? Exactly. Yeah, I think I think that has something to do with it. Um. Yeah, like just like you said, you're like, why would I do this? Like, I, I'm doing this because it's smart. Like, why are you telling me what to do? Kind of thing. Okay. 
Makes sense. So it kind of bleed. It literally does bleed into the gameplay. Then it does. Where... Yeah, you gotta you gotta be good friends outside of the game. Yeah, that's what I love about our new team too. So I'm sure we'll get into that. But I yeah, love, yeah, love the new team. Um, yeah, we only have one more tournament to talk about before yeah. we get into this new team. So then, you know, PAX, this is the biggest tournament of the year. I mean, they announced the prize pool is going to be double the originally uh, scheduled prize pool, which is, you know, huge. I'm sure all the pros are really happy to hear that, that you were making you know, extra money no matter what. Um, yeah. So, you know, maybe tell us a little bit about your experience at PAX. Like, what did you think of the whole event? Like, how did it go for you guys? I know it wasn't obviously the success that you guys wanted, but, you know, how did, how did that event play out in your mind? Um, PAX, that was my first big gaming convention, so... Okay. It, it was an experience to to just be at PAX uh, in itself and just see all the people, all the booths that they had there. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a ton of fun just being there. Uh, but tournament wise, you know, we lo we lost to CLG. Uh, that was well, we won our first series against Straight, pretty easy. Uh, then we lost to CLG uh, by one second. So it was it was kind of well, we choked against them twice. So we won game one, game two was the lockout slayer that we were up by seven kills with you know like two or three to go and they beat us and then we won game three so we kind of choked there could have been a three oh game four we lost by one second in the king of the hill because again ogre two destroying my dreams of, yeah. <laughs> of beating him. but <laughs> uh so that that kind of killed our momentum really um we lost that series and then we had to jump right into the next series against then on fire noble black and lost to them too. Um, so the tournament wasn't really great, like you said, for us. Uh, we kind of caught the the short end of the stick on a couple of situations, which lost the series. But overall, overall, it was great at the at the PAX Convention Center and everything around there. So. Yeah, no, that CLG series I think was probably one of the more exciting ones of the season. Uh, the CLG yeah. denial series. I mean. What, yeah. What's going through your mind when you see you guys go, I think you guys went three down or four down and Ogre 2 is just running. I asked Ryan a similar question. You just see Ogre it, 2 running towards the hill and the casters are freaking out like, oh my god, he's going to get the yeah. hill. Yeah, he backwhacked Mick win and got in the hill for a second. And, you know, I'm just watching my death, green, death cam and see, I think it was Scotty Cloud shooting him from, you know, the opposite portal. While his head's down, so he's not going to die. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, man, we're not going <laughs> to win this. Uh, <laughs> it sucked, and you know, Mickwin was like, "Dude, it was Ogre too," and I was like, "Of course, of course, it was." Yeah, so he made he made a good play. <laughs> so that just uh, does that like really? Def I'm guessing when that happens, you just completely deflate, right? You're like, really? Yeah, and it, it really showed that game five because we got completely destroyed. <laughs> yeah, well, I think even the fact that you guys won game three after being, you know, having such a convincing lead in game two, right near the end, and then you know, failing to close it out. Um, yeah. Even that yeah. says a lot about your guys' character and your ability to bounce back. Asking yeah. a team to do that twice in one series, you might you might be asking a little bit much, tough. right? Yeah, and then and then losing game five and trying to you know pick ourselves back up again for the next series against Noble Black. It was just yeah. it was just pretty hard. So. And Noble was unfortunate. Playing, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Noble was playing very well that tournament too, though. Yeah, they were. I think I honestly think that that the series that CLG series and the CLG Noble Black series were probably two of the top three or four series of the whole year, period. And from yeah, a spectator probably. point of view to watch, yeah. um, I mean, they yeah, were they both were. incredibly entertaining. Incredibly yeah. entertaining. Yeah, um, I bet. So hats off to you for at least entertaining me for an afternoon. <laughs> That's what I always do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, PAX ends, and obviously you guys are competitors. You, you know, you're probably not happy with the things are going. Um, you know, at this point, the community kind of assumes that Denial's dropping Ryan Noob. Ryan still claims that, or uh, says that this came as a shock to him. He was kind of surprised that he got dropped. Um, yeah. Had, had you guys maybe made some amends or something that might have made him feel like this kind of came more out of left field? Like, oh, I thought we had resolved that drama, and now I'm getting dropped. Um, it was really a thing. Yeah, kind of. Um, you know, we I think we were going to stick together with him uh, and Hines. We picked up Hines, and then. Uh, Heinz really wanted to pick up Brad, so we were like, okay, I mean, we d we just got to do it. We just got to drop Ryan. Um, you know, Austin and him kind of had differences because of the whole uh, Ryan saying that we're not going to win and stuff. And then, uh, just quick story, at uh, Gamers Forgiving, we were playing console, and Ryan 
uh, got up. We were up like 47 to 45. Ryan literally got up mid game, went to the other side to the to the team we were playing. I think it was Severance, uh, and sat like sat by them and was like, "What's up?" And and we we ended up losing the game. So that really made Austin pretty mad too. Uh, so I mean, he just held us over and was just like, "Dude, let's just go with APG. Let's just do it." That's it's fair enough. I mean, if you have a if you, if you have a dispute like that, it's just better to move on. Um, yeah. Wouldn't that have cost you guys the game even if you had won? Is don't they have the same? Does the HCS not have the same rule MLG had? Where I know in MLG they would always say that when a team like I think when Clutch beat you guys in the 09 finals, he gets up and he's you know Puckett's like oh god he has to be careful if he walks by if he can see their screen then he loot then they forfeit the game. Is that not a rule in the HCS? Yeah, I don't know. I don't really think they he cared just because it was Conto. Yeah, so, it, he just did it. I don't know. It's Ryan. <laughs> That was a Ryan new move. <laughs> uh, I don't think that story is. I hadn't heard that story at least up till this it, point. So that's a fascinating one. Yeah. <laughs> what did the severance? How did the severance guys react to that? Were they just Dude, like, what? I don't know. I think they just looked over at him and it was like, all right, everyone push because we had full setup too. That's why I'm pretty sure that's why he did it. We were up 47, 45 with full BR setup with snipe and stuff, and they just look over and see him. You know, like what's up? And they're like, uh, all right, push. <laughs> and we just we just go four down. They win. Oh man, it's too bad. It's too bad. Yeah. They even kill Ryan Oop standing still. We won the series, but what was that? They even kill Ryan Oop standing still. Yeah, I think they did. The BM is real. <laughs> Dude, Austin was so mad. <laughs> it was funny, just because he he didn't want to play console anyways. So yeah, and we we made him. You know, it's like, dude, it's extra practice for the finals in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. And then then Ryan did that, and he it it blew, it took his bullying point up to above his head. <laughs> I think that makes sense, though, for any real compet for any like hardcore competitor, you know, I could see that being incredibly frustrating. I don't know how I'd yeah. react in a situation like that. Probably yeah. not well. Probably be a little bit pissed. <laughs> um, so then you guys, you know, you guys start to form this new team. Obviously, um, you pick up uh, Heinz in the straight. So Cloud, does does this kind of come as a shock to you guys that Cloud decides to go to CLG? Uh, yeah. After the finals in Boston, Scotty and I we hung up or hung out for the, the next three days until Wednesday in Boston, you know, just touring around with Spike Mouth because he lives there. Uh, and he didn't mention anything. Um, he, he told me after he left, he told me that they called him after the, after our little vacation that we had. Uh, but, you know, it, yeah, it was kind of a surprise to me that, that it happened, but, you know, good for him. Well, CLG, you know, had been, they literally never placed outside the top two in season one. So from, uh, you can yeah. kind of, you can kind of rationalize it, right? It's like, oh, well, they're a good team. It's not like he's leaving for, it's kind of yeah, like. Yeah, right. I, I didn't blame him, you know. I yeah. probably would have done the same thing if, if I knew our situation and they asked me. So That's fair. I, I didn't blame him. But in the end, it works out for you guys because you guys got Heinz, who's probably you know one of the best all-around players in the game and has been for years. He won you know multiple of the best objective player awards back in the MLG days. And yeah. Then you pick yeah. up APG, who's just this real like slaying talent. Uh, I guess you have to thank Maniac, right? Because you were gonna end up with Ninja originally. And yeah. Then, yeah. Um, well, we asked Brad first. Yeah. Uh, Brad was down for it, and then you know like a few minutes later, or like an hour later maybe, he was like. No, I can't. I really can't do it. I can't leave the team. You know, we we kept bugging him. We had our CEO Robbie try and bug him a little bit to to try and join and leave them, but he didn't have anything to go for it. Um, so yeah, we we asked Ninja. Um, you know, it was all set. It was all squared away. We were going with Ninja, and we we actually told him um, the only way that we wouldn't team with you is if APG, you know, texted us back and told us. That he wanted a team with us. Uh, that that'd really be the only way. Um, what do you know? APG texts us the next day. Hey, he he literally just texts Austin. Hey, and Austin Austin knew what that meant, you know. And then Maniac, he told us Maniac left, and you know it, it was really hard to tell Ninja uh, that we were going back with APG, um, just because we were like I said, we were gonna we were 100 percent, 99 percent. Uh, going with Ninja, and he was so excited, so excited for the team and everything. Uh, and then just to go back to APG, it's hard to tell him, but it's what we had to do. It's what we told him we were gonna do, and you know, APG was our first choice. So, 
Yeah, well, you guys had told him first at least, so it wasn't like he. This it wasn't like it was a complete out of left yeah. field. Like at least he knew it was a possibility beforehand. Um, yeah. So that's actually yeah. really cool of you guys to you know be up front with him because I think you know the the term shady Halo kids exists for a reason, right? Like it's kind of been. Yeah. When it comes to team changes, uh, Halo players aren't exactly the, the most stand-up gentlemen. But mm -hmm. um, it sounds like you guys handle that really well. And you know, it is too bad yeah. for Ninja because he's a really nice That's, guy. Right. He, I think he was a little mad at us at first, but I'm sure he's over it. Yeah, yeah I'm sure he's over it. I think, I think you have to be, like, superhuman not to be a little bit pissed. Like, are you serious? I was on this team and then ate this, like... Yeah. He's probably pissed at Maniac, to be honest. Like, God damn, <laughs> Maniac. Yeah, it's all Maniac's fault. It's all his fault. <laughs> Why did you do this? Um... But, I mean, this new team looks really, really good. Like, I'm a big fan of you guys. I think that, you know, you guys have a lot of promise, and you showed up at Atlanta really, really well. You guys came second. Um, yeah. The metaphor I like to use is that you guys are Leonidas, you know, the spear of Leonidas, and EG is Xerxes. You made them bleed in public. You know, you showed, <laughs> you showed the world yeah. that, you know, they could be, uh, they could, in fact, be beaten in a best of five. I think that's the first time that's happened. I think the last time that happened was actually you guys at two at UGC yeah. St. Louis. Yeah. Um, oh no! They yeah. must have lost another. They must have lost another best of five, right? Because that was in the I winners' think they bracket. Lost the best of five to CLG. Yeah. Um, so you guys played yeah. in the winners' bracket, so then they had yeah, to have did. lost a best of five in the losers' bracket to be eliminated. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yep. Yeah, but still, I mean, you guys seem to be like the EG um, slayers, and you haven't had as much time as a team together, obviously, because they've been teaming mm -hmm. for quite a few months now. So there's a lot yeah. of promise on this team. Like what? What are your expectations with this with this lineup going forward? I mean, is everybody getting along? Is the atmosphere better? Yeah, is... we're still we're still getting along really well. I don't see anything changing. You know, we we all know um, what it takes to win, and that is good friendship. So uh, we're all very good friends. We're all practicing a lot now that the game's fixed. Uh, we're starting we're starting practice back up. But yeah, the second place is it was a good start for us, and we're actually hoping to. You know, be EG, be the EG killers, um, and continue that going. Yeah, no, listen, I, I watch Heinz stream a lot, and you guys see, always seem to be having fun and joking around, and it's it seems like a much yeah. healthier environment than the one that uh, yeah, seemed to exist definitely. beforehand. You know, Xbox Live could cause a little bit of uh, anger in some people, aka me. <laughs> <laughs> but so you might notice that on on Heinz's stream, but it's nothing towards the teammates. So that yeah, that's good. Uh, I think you're perfectly entitled to be frustrated at the fact that yeah. you know the, can't find a match or you have to restart your game 20 million times. I mean, for a week there, it was yeah. pretty, for a week or two there, it was pretty bad. It's yeah, we to... actually didn't play at all uh, after Atlanta until it, it got fixed just this past week. So yeah, yeah, Austin was saying on the pit the other week that uh, he hadn't played up up till that Friday. Yeah. He hadn't even played the he was game. Playing like Counter Strike or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Again, though, you can't really blame him. I mean, if the game doesn't no, work. It's hard. It's hard to get on. Um, the ranks are out now, though. Are you are you guys making your way up? I think APG was was on pace to be the first fifty. Do you know if he's still yeah, the highest he's, level? Or I think he's right up there at the highest. Uh, he's a forty three. Oh wow! So yeah, it's. I mean, it's kind of hard for him to get games now. Uh, searching for people that are good. You know, he wants to play with people that are good. So it's it's kind of hard to get games now for him. But uh, he's forty three. I'm at a thirty three. Make my way up. I think I'm one game from thirty four. Uh, but yeah, it's it's fun. Ranks add add a good competitive uh, atmosphere, I guess you can say, for, to yeah. the to the playlist. So. Yeah, I'm still a lowly 19. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, actually hard to rank up. It, it is. It, it's good. It's it's good. It's hard to rank up. But. Yeah, I've been deranked on ties like three times. It drives me insane. Yeah. Like you tie a game. And, yeah. yeah, you're like what? Yeah. I guess yeah. I I like it though. Now that I think about it, I like it because it encourages you like, to actually try winning. to win. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I like that about it. Um, yeah, actually, let's let's take a step back. Do you think that that was maybe a big problem with with Reach in Halo Four was the fact that because at least in Halo Three and Halo Two, like if you didn't have your team on, you couldn't get a scrim or something like that. You didn't have yeah. eight people to get customs going. You could at least hop in the playlist to know that you were going to get yeah. competitive matches for the most part, right? I mean, at, yep. at level fifteen MLG, there were some blowouts because you know sometimes kids like me play kids like you, and then that never goes well. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and it was super easy to rank up in Halo Three. So and yeah, that was the other thing. Like right? a Forty could play a fifty, but yeah, so. yeah. I think ranking systems are huge and what keep games alive. So I'm glad to see an updated, upgraded uh, one coming to Halo Five, and it should it should create longevity for the game. Yeah, I saw you actually mentioned in an interview with I think it was Admiral Bunny um, at at 
uh, what was it at UGC it was, actually? Yeah, right? it's in St. Louis. That yeah. you uh, that you mentioned that you really like the ranking system with Halo Five. Like, is there is there yeah. some particular reason that you like that? Like, do you like it more than like the Halo Two, like the one system that we have now? Or no, nothing can beat that. <laughs> but uh, I just think it's something new, and it's uh, it's keeping up to date, up to the date with uh, other games as well. I think uh, I'm pretty sure it's pretty close to like. Um, Call of Duty or whatever with the uh, with the leagues and stuff yeah. that they have. Yeah. It's very similar to League of Legends as well. They League they changed the names of the tiers, but same yeah. same general idea. Yeah. Um, didn't the uh, didn't the guy that made the League of Legends ranking system didn't he create the one for Halo Five or so? I know it's something someone very popular that's created a really good ranking system before that created it. It's possible. I don't really I don't know much. Yeah, about I'm not that sure who it was, but. I know that's promising. That's very promising. Yeah, I know the League of Legends system is based on chess. Actually, it's called Elo or Elo. Um, so you gain like ten points for a win, you lose ten for a loss, and then if you're playing somebody who's let's just say hundred points above you, you maybe gain twelve points, and if you're playing somebody who's hundred points below you, you lose twelve, or you only lose eight if you're playing a much better player. Um, yeah. There's a okay. there's, there's a few problems with it in a team sense because obviously you're not because it's a team game, but. The, uh, the general idea is that if you're a, if you're a better player than your ranking, then you'll win uh, more games than you lose, and therefore you'll rank up. Although it's yeah. a bit more grindy, in a sense. Um, at least that's the consensus that in these other games okay. that, that use it. Um, okay. but, but that pretty much covers your your careers. You know the the story of it. Um, is there anything that we left out of the story that you think is important to 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 bring to light? Or no. None that I can really think of, to be honest. It's, it's pretty basic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so generally, what I like to do is kind of end with a few different questions to kind of get to get to know you as a player better rather than, you know, or how you approach the game and all these sorts of things and um, okay. uh, what kind of attracted you to it. Um, yeah. So how much time do you spend thinking about Halo when you're not playing the game itself? Like, are you one of those guys who's in the shower or at work or doing something boring and then all of a sudden this strat idea pops into your head or this push or something like that? Or do you have teammates that do that? Not usually. I don't, okay. I don't really think about it that much. I, I don't really do much right now, though, other than play <laughs> Halo. And uh, I just graduated school. So, uh, nice. Congratulations. Very. Thank you. A lot of free time. A lot of free time. <laughs> uh, uh, all I'm really doing is playing Halo. Nothing really. But yeah, nothing really pops up in my head at the gym or playing basketball or anything. Okay. That's fair. Um, so what, what do you think about the gameplay in Halo 2 Anniversary overall? Like if we leave the bugs and the glitches and all the, the matchmaking crap out of it, what do you think about like the game itself? It's one of the best Halo games that we've had since Halo 3. Uh, I guess there's only been two Reach and Halo 4, but it's it's way better than those two. Uh, so yeah, it's very good. Just three maps. You know, I can't really do much. So if there's more maps, it'd probably be up there with, you know, Halo 2 and Halo 3 as the best Halo game. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you on that. It's like, if they just remade Beaver Creek or, or Midship, or if we can get a nice Forge map, do, do you know about anything? If there's any of the Forge maps down the pipes, or did you get a chance to play any of them, and what, um, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, I played a couple of them. Uh, a couple times, the two that got uh, into the HCS game types, but... Uh, I hope I kind of hope that they don't add them in now. You know, new maps would be nice, but really we're two or three months away from the end of the season. So, you know, we've been playing the three maps. So, why not just keep those three for the last couple couple months in tournaments? Makes sense. Yeah. Um, it looks like based on the release date is in November or in October, right? Of Halo Five, and the season's going to yeah, end in October twenty fifth. Yeah, yeah, the the season's going to end towards the end of the summer. So do you think there'll be like another launch invitational for you guys, or like a pre-launch tournament that you guys get to play yeah. and showcase the game in or something like that? Yeah. Um, I mean, nothing's really guaranteed or announced, obviously, but you can assume that they're going to do something for it, just like they did with MCC. I hope so, at least. It'd be, it'd be fun to go to. Yeah, me too. Because it'll, it'll kind of be like a, a low-pressure tournament, right? Because nobody will have practice, so everybody will kind of... It won't be taken yeah. as seriously as the other ones, but it'll still be obviously right. a high level of competition. Um, yeah. Like, the pre-launch tournaments just seemed like a blast. Like, everybody was having a good time, playing a new game. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's definitely good for the scene. Um, yeah. Especially because it'll get a ton of viewers, too. Yeah. You know, before the game releases, oh, everyone, sure. will see, everyone will see the game. Yeah, so for sure. It'll be a ton of viewers, you know, maybe that'll introduce new people to... HCS. 
yeah. it'd be it'd be a good idea. So I don't see them not doing something, but yeah, we'll see. Completely agree with you. Um, so what? There's there's been a little bit of a trend if you look through your career somewhat that you've you've stand, you've stayed with teams. You know, there's been little periods where you've switched around a lot, but generally you kind of tend to find a group of guys and stick with them. Like you had Breaking Point, then you had Classic. Then you had, you know, classic again in the, the Reach era after that little bit of a turmoil end of 2010, beginning of 2011. Yeah. So is that something about you? Like, as a, because when you look at other, like, top players, they tend to just be all over the place. Hop all over the place, yeah. Yeah. So is that something about you as a person or you as a player? Or what is that that you tend to find a group and stay with them more than your average pro? Yeah. Um, it's, it's me. I like to, you know, I like to build friendships and and stay with people uh obviously if there's someone slacking or something slacking then you know i'm all for a team change because that can be good for teams uh but generally if you're if you're do, placing well placing you know pretty good one time and maybe not so hot the next time you know i'm still all for sticking together because you know what you can achieve together because of that first time but uh, yeah I, I really like to stay with you know the same teams all throughout i think it's good for sponsors uh, like denial, or when I was on Fnatic, you know, switching teams, it's not, it doesn't really look good to them. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I, I like staying together with teams. It seems like you have a very like, like a well thought out reason for it too. I, I completely yeah. agree with you with the sponsor thing. I think that's been one of the bigger issues since the teams came. Since now that the orgs are in Halo, this is something that none of you guys had to worry about when MLG owned all the teams, right? They didn't yeah, really care. Right. It was your, no. uh, completely up to you whether you wanted to hop from A to B, but now this, the whole situation's gotten a lot more complicated because there's mm -hmm. you know, contracts and sponsors and marketing obligations and yeah. all the, the real-life elements to pro gaming, I guess you could say. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think I know the answer to this question, but I have to ask it anyway. What was your favorite tournament ever that you attended? Yeah, yeah, the uh, championships in 09. Okay. That was, that was my favorite. Just because placing well, the atmosphere in Orlando, uh, the hotel that it was at, uh, the Gaylord Hotel, it, it was the best hotels ever. Um, just everything about that tournament was was amazing. I think that was the most money you ever won in one tournament too, right? It was like sixty grand oh, yeah. or something. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's a nice little a pay. It's a nice little paycheck, especially when yeah. you're you know late teens. That's a, that's a <laughs> yeah. big big chunk of change to run into. Um, <laughs> So what were your favorite map and game type of all time? Now, you could have, like, a different, like, your favorite map could be Pit and your favorite game type could be Narrow's Flag. Like, they don't have to be the same thing. But favorite map and favorite game. Favorite map. Let's see. Favorite map was probably Onslaught. Fair enough. Shout out to Slot. Great um, map. Yeah. Uh, favorite game type, you know, probably going back to Halo 3 again. Uh, Construct King of the Hill. Okay, that's a fun one. Have yeah, you ever, yeah, have you played the, Have you played the Halo Two Anniversary version of Onslaught? There's a really good remake out. Yeah, I did play it. Um, it's it's good. It's it's pretty cool. The like, guy did a really good job. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I, I like playing on that one a lot in customs. Yeah. Um, favorite team you were ever on? Um, favorite team. Team Classic with Ghost and B Man and Soldier. I always go back to that team. So. Yeah, I think that's the one that you, you know, the, like I said at the time, I think that that's the one that some, it, when most people say Chig, that's the first team that you know, really pops think into of, mind. Yeah. 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 We were all, like I said, super close to each other. So it was, it was a good time. That's cool. Um, so who do you think is, this is kind of a two part question. Who do you think is the best player of all time? If you look at like all of Halo history together, and then who do you think is the best player, but at it, like a certain point in time? So like if you had to show, like one of your friends came to you and said, hey, Chig, I, I don't know anything about Halo, really. Um, show me a god. Like show me the best player. Like who would you show them from what point in time? Best Halo player of all time? Ogre 2, obviously. Okay. Um, showing someone new, I would say Roy. Roy? From what era? Yeah. Roy from Halo 3 to present. Oh, wow. So you're giving him the whole, whole time. Yeah, he's, oh. he's been up at the top since then. Yeah. You know, he's, he's every Halo game, he's one of the best players. He plays the, he plays the game right. Uh, if I had to show them, you know, a stream or something, 
is one of the best communicators that you'll ever hear. Uh, he he just does it all. He plays he plays his good Halo. Yeah, he's a really good player. It's hard to argue with that one. Yeah, even um, better guy too. <laughs> yeah, he seems like a really nice guy. Yeah. Um. So, have you ever? Do you ever watch any other esports games, or like, have you played any other esports games, or do you follow any of them or anything like that? Uh, Call of Duty. Okay. You know, I got to support Denial Cod. Denial Cod. Yeah. Uh, the Nash, the World Chance, I should say. Yeah. Um. So I, I watch some of that and follow follow that pretty, pretty uh, a lot, I should say, but uh. Nothing really else. I don't watch computer games, Counter Strike, or anything. Um, just basically stick to console. Just Halo and COD. Did you play COD? Uh, I played Black Ops two for a little bit. I tried to compete um, when the grind was going on to make it to the uh, COD champs, but um, just played that. Played a little bit of Ghost and gave up. Then come back to Halo. And see, it's a hard transition for a lot of Halo players to go to COD. I mean, the guys like Formal and Enable who can seem to do it, it's like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Those guys are freaks. They, they put a lot of time into it and it paid off. Yeah, sure. COD's a giant game now. It's almost it's almost kind of yeah. sad as, as an old school Halo fan, right? Because you're like, that's where Halo could be today. Like, that's where we could <laughs> yeah. be because we were the bigger game. But, yeah, uh, that's true. How the times have changed. Okay, so. Yeah, support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, well, hey, 343 is giving it to us now, so yeah, that's always a good thing. It is. Um, okay, so the final question that I like to do, I, I pose this exact question to everybody. I changed the wording a little bit of it. Um, so let's just say that this Putin challenges Obama to some, some crazy, you know, we, we don't want to have another world Putin. war, so we're going to do... We're gonna Who challenges do Obama? Putin, the, the, Russian, the Russian president, okay? He says, oh, okay. he goes, this is what's going to happen. We don't want to start another world war. So I have a Halo team that's going to beat EG, and Obama laughs at him, and then these Russian guys beat EG, just destroy them out of nowhere. So, and then Putin's a nice guy, though, and he says, okay, Obama, I'm going to give you one more chance. You have to build a team that can win. And he comes to you. He says, Chig, America's freedom is on your back right now. You need to win this, you need to win this series against these guys who are better than EG. These guys are just on a whole other level. Like, they're ridiculous. So he comes to you and he says, you're, you know, second best team right now. You guys came second at that tournament. You, got, you can do it. Build a team. But here's the catch. All your teammates, you're not allowed to use them. Okay. So none of, nobody from the current denial roster can be used. Okay. That's good because I was going to say them. But uh, <laughs> um, let's go with myself, um, Roy. Okay. Uh, snipe down. Okay. And lunchbox. Wow. EG plus me. <laughs> <laughs> Later, lethal. Nah. <laughs> so that's the move that's gonna that's gonna save the world. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's fair. Yeah, that, that'll do it. There's been quite a few people who have set themselves onto EG. In the, in the, <laughs> I, I asked that question yeah, in various yeah. ways, yeah. but yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty <laughs> safe answer. It's it's hard to it's hard to argue with that. Um, yeah. Okay, so I think that pretty much does it. Is there anything that you know if you want to say or you want to tell anybody any shout outs or anything like that that you want to end off with? Yeah, of course. Shout out to Denial and all of our sponsors, uh, Plantronics, Scuff Gaming. Uh, let me look at my jersey real quick. Control Freak, Esports Apparel, and Micro Center. Uh, also, I'll be streaming in by May twenty fifth. So just to, under a couple of weeks. Uh, first time that I'm ever going to be streaming. Uh, okay. Going back home to my my parents' house since I graduated, and they have a lot better internet than I do here. So I'll lift up my computer real quick, show you. Can you see it? All the boxes in there. Oh yeah, see that's the all. new computer. That's the new Ooh, desk. It's gonna be nice. Capture card, camera. <laughs> so it, it's all here. Just gotta wait till I move out of my apartment in a couple weeks, awesome. and the chick stream will be ready. Awesome. Well, uh, if you if you already have the link for that and everything, you can give it to me, and I'll put it in the description of this video below. Um, yeah, it'll be twitch.tv slash chig. Okay. Uh, very simple. Very easy to find. Um, Check it out. <laughs> so I guess that pretty much does it. Uh, his Twitter is right under his face right now, so you can give him a follow. Um, and I guess that pretty much does it. Thanks, everybody, right. for watching. Take care.